The sound of roaring engines, big blocks revving up, turbos whistling, superchargers whining, the adrenaline rushing through your body. This is the beauty of power boating. The love for speed on the water is what we enjoy, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Great dangers exist when navigating in these boats. What's up guys, it's Life Offshore. If you like this video, and if you like the marine world, drop a thumbs up, it really helps me out, and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions for me, follow me on Instagram, and send me a DM at life.offshore. Today we'll be talking about the dangers associated with power boating. This will shed light not only on performance boating, but also on boating in general. This is something that needs to be talked about more now that more people are getting into boating with all these haul over videos going viral. As you can see from these videos, a lot of people don't know what they're doing. And a part of that is because they don't understand the dangers that come with boating. If they did, they'd be more intrigued than learning how to operate a vessel the correct way. A few years ago, a video surfaced of a big 38 fountain with a lot of power and a lot of people on board. The fast the you go on the water, the harder it is and the less time you have to correct a mistake before it can become deadly. This is a classic video of someone who has experience in boating but let their guard down for a quick second and unfortunately paid the price. This is a moment that could have been avoided. You see him giving the boat more throttle when he starts to lose control. This is what I mean when I say the faster you go, the less time you have to correct a mistake. All it takes is one second of lost concentration at high speeds for a mistake to become fatal. Thankfully and fortunately there was no deaths in that instance, but there were a lot of injuries and broken bones. You'll see a lot of the high performance boats that are involved in crashes, they're catamarans. The reason being is that they're so light and the design provides a lot of lift to the hull. So if you catch a pocket of air at the wrong time, it can easily flip the boat when you're going at high speeds. Catamarans have a lot less surface on the water compared to a traditional V-bottom. The tunnel provides a lot of lift to the entire hull. That's why they're so much faster than a monohull, but also a lot more dangerous to operate in certain environments. We all know bad habits are hard to correct. That's what happens for a lot of people that get into boating, not just performance boats, but any type of boating. They learn the wrong way, by either not getting taught by someone that knows, or by trying to learn on their own. That's why you see a lot of people at the ramps causing accidents, hitting other boats. I mean, believe it or not, people don't realize that boats do not have brakes. This is especially true when you're approaching a dock and don't know what to do. I operate a vessel with one saying that always sticks with me. Don't go faster than you're willing to hit the dock. Sometimes you have no choice when it comes to speed around the dock because you will have wind on your back or possibly a current pushing you towards or pushing you in an opposite direction so you have to give the boat more speed. But for the most part, when you're in tight spaces, this is especially true that slow is fast. On another note, a lot of accidents in recreational performance boating happen because of ego. The owner sees someone going faster and they try to keep up. Remember, not all boats are created equally. For example, a 48 foot MTI is made to comfortably cruise at speeds above 120 miles an hour. So just because you have a boat that can hit 130 miles an hour, doesn't mean it's made to cruise at those speeds. A 30 foot cat is going to be a lot less stable at those speeds than a monster like a 48 or 52 foot MTI. You have to choose your battles wisely and not let your ego get in the way of making poor decisions. That's obviously easier said than done when you're at a poker run and someone challenges you in front of your friends. In those instances, it's hard to put your ego to the side, especially when you're a power boater and you just love speed. But all these accidents and dangers that are associated with power boating is reflected in the insurance prices for this sector of boating. That is why the premium is extremely expensive to insure these high performance boats. For example, a boat that would normally cost $4,000 to insure a year, based on the value, would cost $15,000 a year to insure if it's a high performance boat. And not to mention less and less companies are insuring these boats. I would love to see the sector of boating grow more. That would drive the companies to make more affordable performance boats like my guys over at Hellcat Power Boats. This sector has pretty much been priced out by the rich. That about wraps it up for this video, guys. Don't forget, speed isn't everything. It's the only thing. And until next time, you can catch me offshore.